Now, a little bit of behind the scenes context for this one. This podcast is so well thought out because it was literally a thought that I had in my training session earlier on this week that we've taken three episodes, no, not even that, three three attempts three to t- film, yes. record <laughs> this intro. Sometimes the best well, it's pod- a well polished machine, Tim. It's well, a well polished machine. The thing is, Jacko, like often our best podcasts are the most unscripted, and you can tell I've well, been upfront and honest, that is what is gonna happen today. But we're gonna try and talk around something which I think is both on my mind and Jacko's mind around training in a way which makes you happy and feel, fills you with enjoyment, but then also finding peace and contentment with the physique that you get as a result, as opposed to making your training about looking a certain way, but then actually not feeling very good about it. Not very snappy, but lots of meat on there to discuss. Jacko. For sure. Um, and I think it's something we've talked about for, for, for a long time, ever since the start, and we can, go, we can go back through the archives a little bit as we get into it, around just like, train so your body can do something rather than how it looks is something we said before and we're probably going to a few layers deeper than that um, in the session today and when you said about the, what you wanted to talk about on the podcast today when you told me that last night it made me happy just that we were going to even have that then conversation so I'm looking I'm looking forward to it um, before we get into the podcast though we do have to remind you of the uh, Spartan race opportunity that's coming up thanks to the sponsors of the Movement, Strength and Plate podcast at Spartan Races, where um, you've got the opportunity to join us and the team in a Spartan race. Uh, well, essentially, you could join our one, but you could use your free code to take up any of the Spartan races on the website that you want to. But there's a Midlands one close to us, um, all different lengths and sizes, uh, I think 5K up to 21K on the 16th, 17th of July. Is that right? Or is yep. it June? July. July. And um, yeah, but you have to do a little bit of something to get, you can't just give away, there's 50 free spaces. Um, and I think even the top, is it worth, it worth like 80, 90 quid or something? These Yeah, it's nearly 100 quid. Different. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So you have to go on your Instagram and take a photo or video of you training, preparing for your Spartan race. Now we've had some already, people have secured their uh, free uh, free codes already um, but we did ask for a bit more like uh, a bit more spartan a bit more speedo <laughs> a bit more something um whereas it was very very they were, they've so far been they've ticked all the boxes they've tagged spartan they've used hashtag spartan race they've tagged score of and then sent it us so that we can see and validate it and give them the code that's what you got to do but we're looking for a little bit more je ne sais quoi you know um if pizzazz possible pizzazz yeah tim loves a little bit of something extra a little bit of <laughs> just a little bit of spice on top a little bit of something well we've got a i would also say that, that midlands one there's, there's two reasons jackie why i think that one is good one we're going to be there and the second thing is july the potential for a nice run out in the sun mm. is high i'm excited about having some good weather for it so anyway what you need to do is take a photo of yourself training for the spartan race You've got a tag in Spartan Race. I'm looking at Jacko now because he's going to qualify with I'm giving you the right instructions or not. Spartan. You also need to use hashtag Spartan Race. Do you want to do this the, bit? The tag, the tag is Spartan. So Spartan's Instagram handle is Spartan. Okay. You need to tag Spartan, tag us, we're Scorecast Linux, and then the hashtag is Spartan Race. You've got to do those three things and then send it to us and we will validate that you've passed all of those uh, criteria. Um, hopefully add a little bit of spice, make us laugh basically. Um, and then uh, and then you get your free code and you can enjoy uh, any of the races but ideally come and enjoy it with us marvelous i think let's go i'm going to segue from that jacko into the podcast topic for today i don't think spartans generally were that bothered about what they look like i don't think Ooh. physique was a primary goal if you were a spartan no, if i'm being honest probably just survival of life i was yeah, going to throw not... something out there i don't know if it's possible um because i think there's a 5k a 10k and a 21k something like that um and maybe there's another one um whether they're all at the same time or uh so that no one misses out like can we just do all of them you can just if you like out there timbo can, I said, yeah. can we do all of them <laughs> <I get it. laughs> um let, well let's let we'll leave that for later otherwise this is going to be a, a, a said to jacko we're going to do a short intro today we haven't <laughs> a short intro we failed miserably anyway let's get into the main belly of the podcast today the six pack back of the and podcast. enjoy talking about Yes, the Spartan six-pack of the podcast. We're going to talk about physique and training and being content with all things. 
Jacko, roll that jingle. Listen, players. <laughs> You're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. So Timbo, let's get let's get into this belly, into this into this six pack of the uh, of the of the episode. You were having a thought, that, or this this thought springs to mind about this, and I, I would dare to say this isn't necessarily the first time you've had this thought. I would say you've you've probably had this thought for as long as I've known you when we're talking about training. Probably true. To and some just degree. Yes, it's been it probably just floats around, and I, this is probably like I think for most people, I was chatting to somebody else about this the other week, who's also um, sort of well trained, got a good training background, works as, as a coach. We often find ourselves kind of like undulating around different types of training, and we do one thing, and then we kind of like we go over there, and then we see this other shiny thing over there, and we think, oh, I should really be doing a bit of that, and it's just kind of like fall that we can often fall into the trap of wanting to do all things. Um, and it's quite difficult for a lot of people to kind of balance that training program if you're not somebody who's potentially going to have six or seven days a week to train. Um, so there has to become a decision-making process about how we are going to structure our training. And ultimately, like I'm always been really focused, probably from a sports performance background, of just going, what are we training for? So I'm not really somebody who just kind of goes into a training block and going, it's training for training's sake. Sometimes I'm like that if if the, if the batteries are, are low. But ultimately, I'm kind of like trying to achieve some kind of physical adaptation within my training program. So there's phases which I enjoy. So like, let's, let's kind of like, we're going to talk about physique. So we're going to talk about hypertrophy, which is effectively for those people who maybe don't know, is the development of skeletal muscle mass. So we're trying to get bigger muscles as a result of hypertrophy training. And there's various sort of sets and reps which you would normally use to elicit that. So we can work anything from roughly sort of six to 10 repetitions to get kind of like a high tension response or building this new tissue. But there's also value of hypertrophy work uh, or doing hypertrophy work targeted around 20 repetitions. So the science is starting to kind of emerge. We're not going to get bogged down in reps and sets today. But a major thing, a major driving factor of it is you need to get volume in. So it's about a cumulative number of sets across a week on a muscle group is going to, at, at the right intensity, is going to stimulate muscle growth. Now, we also need to play into a little bit of consideration within that things around nutrition. So we might need to, we need to be in a calorie um, surplus if we're going to improve or grow muscle mass the body's not going to grow muscle if we're in a calorie, calorie deficit so we need to potentially eating a little bit more not a lot but some a little bit more and we're also going to need to be mindful about protein intake throughout the day so there's a nutritional kind of um, element to consider as well what sometimes happens and i'm going to get to my point now jack and i'm going to pass it over to you is i've just done a block of hypertrophy type work so i've done four weeks four or five sessions a week look at the reps and sets that i'm targeting trying to get like between t- 10 and 20 sets per body part across the week what then also happens is like you because that is the focus you then often sacrifice another type of training because i can't get all of it in and also if you're trying to build muscle mass and stay in a calorie surplus like it then becomes quite difficult to then go and do more like metabolic or fitness kind of um conditioning work because you're then burning lots of calories which is potentially going to mean that you get into a are you breaking down proteins as muscles of as fuel sources all this kind of stuff so often the biggest way or the best way to get big is just to do, get big training like not to go and confuse it with with other things so loads of people have done this in the past you go on a hypertrophy block you're generally pretty lean most of the year round you start eating a bit more you train a certain way you start feeling sluggish you kind of kind of get a little bit like fluffy around the edges because you're eating more not moving quite as much as you might have done And then four weeks in, you're like, do you know what? I don't really feel great. So I'm going to go over and do this other thing where you've not really kind of given yourself enough time to go down that hypertrophy phase to really get sort of significant um, improvements and gains. So we end up kind of just jumping around. Now, here we go, Jacko, coming into land five minutes in. (laughs) The thing that just occurred to me this week was like, and this is like a a thought I've had a long time, but I need to remind myself of it. This is often like our podcast is a therapy session is why don't I just find happiness and joy in the training in the way that I like to train and that I feel good and let them, and then find that contentment within the physique that I get as a result of that? Because otherwise I'm in a training phase or where I'm trying to look and feel a certain way from a physique perspective by doing training which doesn't make me feel my best self. So, for example, loads of hypertrophy work. 
less conditioning, go into a conditioning work workout and just feel horrible because you've just not, you've ignored that side of you, of your training program. So I'm just kind of like, that's kind of just on my mind this week of going, how do you structure your training program? So you get the things that you want. So I'm going to get some hypertrophy work in there, but it's not all in, in on that. But I can also do the other things and just like, what physique am I going to get from, from, from doing that? If it's a well-rounded program, you're probably going to get quite an athletic physique. Like, I don't want to look like a bodybuilder and I don't want to train like a bodybuilder, but I sometimes get pulled into that mindset of thinking that I need to based on what other people are doing, largely in comparing myself to other people. Yeah. There's, um, there's my intro. Um, I th thank you for sharing so honestly. Um, <laughs> I... yeah, me, Jack, you know me, mate? I love an overshare. <laughs> I <laughs> cannot hold it in. <laughs> <laughs> I think that there's a couple of important things. Um, one being that notion where you finished on around like how getting distracted or just seeing other stuff and being like, oh, no, actually, should I be like that because that person's over there, so you know, whatever. And then there's there's also then going back to going like what you said right at the beginning around what's it for? What's the what's the purpose of it? What am I training towards? And the the, the not to shoehorn the Spartan race thing in, but you know, there's a date that someone could train for something and give themselves some reason to do a, a block of training. Um, and that's why events and stuff um, work. The So I want to just touch on those two things. The first one then around like, I think previously, like for example, when I when back in the day, literally before when Facebook was, probably Facebook didn't even exist when I first started. When you're like an adult, but you're playing rugby. I remember being at uni msn messenger and maybe facebook just started but there was no such thing as like instagram and no one was posting training videos it was like the, the closest you got to it is you'd see someone else doing something in the gym and it's like oh like i might try that the join the that might be the close i might try that or that, that's the closest thing you get whereas now you know when you when you're at uni, though, just on that one, I feel free to remember, like, in 1980, 1999, 2000. <laughs> 1980, like, when, when were you at uni, Tim? 1999, <laughs> 2000, 2001. <laughs> I think back, I didn't know that many Jack people. Even at the gym, there wasn't that many. There was a couple of guys on steroids, but they were, like, the yeah, anomaly. Man. But I trained at Power that, Base, lad. I trained at Power Base. That was was like everyone jacked? Well, not me. Everyone else was. It was like, <laughs> if you couldn't bench 100, it was like, what are you doing here, lad? Get off. Um <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted you then. Uh, so, yeah, that just um, now, though, with social media, if you want to and if you let yourself be distracted, you can scroll through and see as many different crazy training things as you want and feel like you're constantly missing out on doing all these things. And then it's like, that's, that's just, I think, a, 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 an additional challenge that we just never used to have. Um, it just didn't really exist. You couldn't see what every other people were doing. Like, and what and ultimately because what does it matter what does it matter if there's like john over in mexico doing something with his ear to pick up a rock or i don't know whatever <laughs> like do you know what i mean like, oh, cranky, i don't train my ears like maybe i need to train my ears more um but so, i think some of that is around community isn't it because like if you're in a running club you look around and you go do you know what? i'm quite jacked in my community like i'm the biggest dude in my running club which why is you like i running <laughs> <laughs> But then if you if you go to a bodybuilding gym, I remember like I saw something about Nick Mitchell, like and he's a, he's got like a, a people in the industry will know him, but like he's he's got a big like history and background in in bodybuilding, and he was like he was in his growing up he was the biggest dude, and then he went to like Gold's gym and he was like looked like a complete stick, like so the people around you that your uh, yeah. your your kind of your community will dictate how you feel in these sorts of conversations, but yeah. our community in inverted commas now is social, so we can actually expose ourselves to people that we would never normally come in contact with. And compare ourselves against them or to um, them. Little anecdote for you. Hence, hence why the um, the story goes, uh, Tom Cruise um, will only allow them to cast people that are either the same height or smaller than him in films. So that <laughs> can't be true because he did a he did a thing with Nicole Kidman and she's about six foot five. But you know what? But that but it's just that you, uh, someone <laughs> mentioned that the other day to me. But that um, that notion of yeah, the people around you. Now, ultimately, what matters is it, none of it matters. <laughs> yeah right that's it <laughs> that's no but as in <laughs> as in what all these different people are doing because actually the, the go it, those all of that can just be put to one side when you go back to your first point of going well what am i doing it for anyway and what do i want out of this and if it's about your training 
must for everyone like our training must be about us our training can't be about anyone else if you're training for an event or a competition or it's your sport or something then it's like that's like uh, some some framework to work within but it's still for you doing that thing or that competition or that sport and so if if we if we think of it as just take that truth on board like well it's just about me so it, it doesn't matter what all these other people are doing um you might some other people might be able to give you some help and some advice so you can enjoy what it is you're doing more um but it doesn't matter what they're doing and i think that trying to let that resonate can can help free us from from some of that um and 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 so like looking at what is it like what is it like what you, like, you mentioned doing a, a hypertrophy block like what was it for i think this and and just this was you don't necessarily, necessarily have to answer i'm just hoping asking people to ask that question and if i go back to just from my own experiences i found it really difficult when i came away from a sport and it was like the reason to train it was just like what is it why yeah so why am i doing it oh just to, and then it's like oh well, my, is it is it just to get jacked or is it to, and you know with calisthenics it found a way to it be for it to not be about how uh, we look to, to be more about how we feel or what you not how you feel how what you can do with your body whereas i think now for me it's definitely transitioning more towards um well how do i how do i feel not just like what i can do with my body um and i think that's that's an evolution of things over time and uh, i don't know you know like we've had mark smelly bell on the podcast and you look at like the in some of the insane stuff that he'd done from a strength powerless thing sorry and bodybuilding perspective then you look at some of the stuff that what he's doing now and he ran did he run a half marathon the other day and he's you know he's doing his knees over toes stuff because he needs his knees to feel better like he's I think in time, a lot of people will move towards a state of, I just want to look after my body. Um, mm. And uh, But yeah, but to, to go sort of full circle around to like what to, what you mentioned around the very start of this, of why don't I do what I enjoy? Like honestly, when you sent me that message saying that's what you want to talk about in the podcast, it literally did fill me with some joy. Like, I, was in the, I was in the back last night when, he, when I read the message and I was like, and I smiled because I was just like, yeah, literally, like what I did yesterday for training is you can't even call it training. I was just in the garden, the sun was shining, and I was just moving. I was literally just moving. And I almost reminded, it was reminding me of um, Santa, Santina, Santana. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't as far out as what, what she might do. But um, it was funny because I was really enjoying it with them. But part of me was like, but is this building strength? And then I was like, mm. shut up. Just, you just, it's just nice what you're doing. You're enjoying it. Just enjoy doing it. Um, so yeah, it was a timely message. What you sent last night around, like do what you enjoy. Like I'm running more now. Like I enjoy going out for a run. Is it, is it helping me with my flexibility for a pancake? No, but will I work on that as well at a different time? Like maybe, yeah, if that's what I want to do, but it's, it's trying to i'm definitely tapping into more of that doing what i just like doing and then when mm. my body and then like the body and mind going together like you feel better when you're enjoying your body but yeah the two things are linked um, but it's yeah. a constant challenge right of like i'll flick on i'll i'll be on instagram later and see someone doing something i'll be like but sometimes it's like oh i wonder if i could do that there's a bit of that, but then the other bit's like, oh yeah, no, actually, actually, no, I'm looking a bit skinny. Do I need to do a bit more? Like I was running down mm. this mountain uh, yesterday or the day before, and I was like, hmm, why were you doing like whatever, like shoulders? Like I was doing like whatever I was doing around like upper body last week. I was like, or the last few weeks, I was just like, that's not really helping you now, right now, is it? Like, yeah, you might like the biceps and triceps look a bit bigger, but um, that's not helping you run up this mountain. Uh, and I was like, yeah. So these are the types of conversations that go on in my head as well. I, th I think that part of the danger is like if you're if you're a relative sort of type A person and you you kind of you want to look and feel epic, like the the interpretation of that of going like well I want to do if I'm going to do this kind of like if I'm going to run up mountains I'm really good at running up mountains, and if I'm going to do hypertrophy I want to I want to I want to see some results yeah. for the work that I've put in, but it's like I'm just trying to find much more peace and going like 
just be uh, just be comfortable as a generalist and I sometimes find that people don't want to hear this message because we kind of get fed this mantra of like you just got to be the best all the time like you've got to be constantly pushing forwards but like what if you're just a really good generalist so and and like so for me now like we, we're going to do another podcast down the, in a couple of episodes around just sort of what our training looks like and where our philosophies have kind of moved to but like I've started training in a CrossFit box for a number of different reasons, which I will talk about later. Um, and I do some CrossFit sessions now and, and there's a number of like elements to that. But I still like my focus is actually just the gymnastics and I call it inverted commas, the gymnastics element. It's not really gymnastics, it's calisthenics. Um, but I like the pull up stuff like this is the Murph kind of workout, which is running bodyweight squats, push ups and and pull-ups like in a, in a relatively sort of like voluminous format is coming up on like the 2nd of June like and I'm looking forward to that because it's kind of like it's a body weight focused workout I'm not, I'm not really putting much time into Olympic lifting because it's it takes a lot of the session time to get better at that and I don't really kind of enjoy it that much over the and what am I sacrificing it's always opportunity cost right if I've got yeah. three or four hours a week to train like how am I going to spend that time to get the best results for what I want to, to do and I, and I think that's like, if I've, I want to stay like in, in body composition to be in a certain way, I do like some of that strength type cluster work and that what would typically fall within hypertrophy. I like calisthenics and body weight stuff. So I've got a mixture of kind of like body weight and barbell stuff in, in, my, in my workouts at the moment. I'm doing some pretty kind of like full out conditioning type work. And it's this kind of like, what's that going to mean? And, and bringing it around to this physique conversation, like what am I going to look like from that? Well, I'm not probably going to be the biggest guy in the gym. But I'm probably going to be able to, if you said to me, Tim, do you want to go for a run? And we're going to do 15K. Like, I'm not going to be as good at you that 15K, but I can come and hold my own and probably we can get around it and have a nice time. Like, but whereas if I'm not doing any conditioning work, that is going to be miserable. So I'm not going to enjoy it. And, and this is the thing of like going, can I be ready to kind of just go and do anything that I really kind of want to enjoy? I can jump in that session with confidence and still get some enjoyment out of it rather than you going, Tim, let's go for a run and me hating it from like, 3k in because i've just body is just not in a place to be able to go and do something like that and i kind of like to, to to build that into a bigger picture like trying to look a certain way and i've talked about this before around like what is my genetic potential to look a certain way about how how able am i to kind of build that body mass um versus like just uh, playing to where your strengths are in terms of the things that you are generally going to be quite good at. And and I think your point around like moving well, being pain-free, having a decent level of like metabolic conditioning so that you can, one, from a health perspective, but two, you can also do the things that you want to do. Like just rock up to Spartan race in a 10K and go, I'm going to just go, I can finish this. I've got no doubt that I can do a 10K Spartan, no doubt. Like could I do the 21? Like that running up distance will probably be difficult for me because I've never probably run that far in my life. But if you said, come on, let's do it, and with pace isn't an issue, I'd be like, okay, well, probably yeah. could get around that. Um, and the, the upshot of that from a physique perspective is I'm going to look pretty athletic. I'm going to be lean. There's going to be some muscle mass on me, but it's not going to be like the extreme of it. And I, I guess the, the whole kind of t my takeaway from this is well, two final, final points, and you can wrap it up, is can I find peace in doing the training that I like, which gives me the physique that I get as a result of that training rather than thinking that I've got to prioritize what my physique is and then steer my training program in a direction, which then potentially excludes things that A, are good for me and B, that I like doing. So it's kind of, I think we sometimes put this physique up on maybe too much of a pedestal and too much of a priority because of this comparison to other people. And we also forget, like no one goes, here's my Instagram post today. Before you look at my picture, remember that I've been training like this for 10 years or 20 years or however long. And this is that I've done this form of training for this long. And therefore, my body looks like this because of the training that I enjoy doing and have enjoyed for 20 years. Yeah. I think there's so many people that just don't have that training background and then compare themselves to people that do. And that's actually from a health perspective, not well, mental health perspective, not great. So yeah. find peace okay. in where you're at. Find peace in where you've been before, what you've done in the past find a piece in the charts of training that you like doing and if you do those well you're going to look good and hopefully you'll feel good because you've got that rounded generalist approach to the things that you want to do and if that is bodybuilding crack on Great. like yeah. the, the whole thing is like enjoy the training it's different if the physique is the objective and the outcome but hopefully yeah. that point has come across yeah but just making sure that it's for, it's like it's what you actually want to do not just what you're doing for some other reason that you actually want to do it you actually 
um, enjoy it. And I like that phrase that you said, like find finding peace in that because like ultimately, like we've talked about this before around like your body is like your, maybe we didn't describe it like this, but someone said it to me the other day, it was, it was Sally Bell actually. Um, like your body is like your vessel in which your soul experiences like the world. Um, like the, the the physical world, like your physical body is that, and being able to like you have to get around in your body. You can't transport yourself outside of your body. Now, if your body don't work very well, or is in pain, or is injured all the time, then it stops you enjoy being able to actually go and enjoy life. And we've talked about the the whole notion of training should enhance our lives, not like overtake it or dis- diminish it or or, or reduce it. And like being able to go and go and do things like that's that's the key. And I think that the, the other thing that was put that I, to, to sort of wrap it up on that was for me that was just going through a mind you were talking then was that ultimately if it's about if it's too much about how you look and in the short term, like looking better and feeling better, like and mentally that helping with you feel better, like that's great. But. There's going to be a time, hopefully there'll be a time, hopefully you don't die too early, hopefully there's a time when you're old and you're wrinkly and you're saggy and it ain't whatever you're trying to, however, I just, I've absolutely no doubt in my mind that when I'm lying on my deathbed, I'm not at all thinking about, oh, should I have done some more bicep curls? Oh, what are my biceps looking like? Like, it's just not going to be in the conversation. And so I think taking a wide, for me personally, taking a wider view on it, um, can certainly help with that um, perspective. This is an interesting thing that the listeners will hear that Jacko still lives, <laughs> is living, currently living in a house where you have a landline, <laughs> which I, I think is a foreign thing these days. You hear a landline ring, I'm like, what's that? What's going on? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm and an answer with, machine as well. Currently <laughs> at, at Mama Jacko's house, yes, that is correct. <laughs> Absolutely Leave well that put, in. Jacko. Leave that I think in. we've. It's real. I'm going to. I can't. I couldn't because you were talking at the same time. So I'd have to, I'd have to get the chop you off the bottom. I mean, the, the the production support <laughs> production team. team yeah, anyway. Production team. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, let's not labour the point anymore. We think we've made it. So just our kind of take home message is: go and think about that. And um, if you are somebody like me who ob- probably over obsesses about what they look like and compares themselves to other people too much, stop doing it. Um, because I'm finding that actually. At, 41 years old these things are less important and i would rather have that option to not feel like there's a pet there's a I, don't, I would rather be in a place where my athletic abilities physical cap- capacities are of a place where i can say yes more so i can and, and those things are going to be like can you move well without pain yes well that opens the door up to being able to go and do a spartan because i know i can get around because the body's going to be pretty robust nothing's going to break down have i got a level of conditioning which means i can go out and do these kind of things yes have you got a level of strength which means that you can get over walls and all that sort of stuff yes you have that's why i think these kind of obstacle course racing and to a point like this functional fitness sort of space is of benefit because it does push you into this generalist approach have you got a few calisthenic skills in the locker? Because that's kind of fun and it's a good way to train. Yes, you have. I, I just think there's like sitting in the middle, being comfortable with that and going, right, okay, well, if I now want to kind of tweak or lean towards a particular one of these things for a period of time, we can just keep things kind of these other plates spinning pretty well. Um, so go and have a think about that and find some peace with it. Yeah. And if that resonates or if you've got anything to your own experience to share, we'd love to... Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, catch us over on Instagram at School of Calisthenics or um, Tim, you are Dynamic Shoulders on Instagram if you want the sort of personal accounts. And I'm Jacko.David.Jackson. Recently made a, a change to be just more David Jackson. I saw that. Um, mm. Yeah, so. Do more uh, you. Do you, Jacko. Do you. Do you. So, um, yeah, get in touch. Let us know. And um, we look forward to hearing from you and also seeing those of you um, at the Spartan race in and seeing your training for the Spartan race on Instagram, too. So don't forget, you got a chance to be one of 50 free places. All right, we're going to sign off. Until next week, keep exploring your physical potential with movement, strength, and play. Class dismissed. <laughs>